Welcome back to part five of the series on Kaggle Simplified Forecasting Competition. Hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe. In this video, we're going to approach the problem in a different direction. As always, timestamps and links to the notebook are down in the descriptions below. In previous videos, we've tried to use different methods to make predictions on level 12 series and then aggregate to get forecasts for higher levels. So I thought it might be worth trying to go from the top down. The benefit of going from top down is that the aggregated cells from a bunch of products and different stores together might be less susceptible to random spikes or dips. Or in other words, the patterns across time might be more predictable. In the benchmark approaches that the host provided, they actually mentioned going from top down. For example, with the ARIMA TD method, they used the best ARIMA model to forecast for the level 1 series, which is the aggregation of every product and every store, and redistributed that forecast to lower level series using historical proportions for the last 28 days. Before we get into the code, don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this useful, and if you have any questions or see any issues, feel free to leave a comment below. Let's get started! I made a copy of the notebook we wrote for the last video, and the only change we have to make is with the prediction method. The plan is to get the forecast for one of the higher level series, calculate what proportion of that higher level forecast should be distributed to the level 12 series, and then aggregate the level 12 series to get all the other levels and evaluate our local validation set. For consistency, I'll use the best performing method from the last video, which is to just use the exact same values as the last 28 days. So I'll run the weight calculation just as before, But this time, instead of aggregating to get a higher level forecast, we want to first aggregate just to get the sales number in order to make forecast at any level. We also want to make sure that all the ID columns are present in the aggregate data frame, because when we redistribute the forecast, we'll need these to tell us which higher level group does the level 12 series belong to. Since the higher levels only group by one or two ID at a time, I'm just assigning the other ID columns with the value all. The sum of weights should still be 1, and this is what the aggregate data frame will look like. It's got all the sales number as before, no forecast columns, and additional ID columns to specify its aggregation group. Now we can start thinking about how to approach this top-down method. From what I understood in the benchmark description, the forecast for a higher level is redistributed to a level 12 series based on historical proportions, and they say it's estimated over the last 28 days. So my understanding is that this proportion is the sum or average of sales, whichever you like because they'll give you the same effect. So sum or average of the last 28 days in a level 12 series divided by sum or average of the sales of a higher level series. Then the forecast of any level 12 series will simply be the forecast for the higher level series times this proportion. Of course, when we are redistributing higher level sales, we need to make sure we're doing it within the splitting group. For example, at level 1, everything is in the same group, so we're just dividing sales of level 12 by sales of the level 1 series and multiplying that by the forecast for the level 1 series. Then level 2 gets slightly more complicated, where for a level 12 series with state ID CA, we divide its sales by the CA series in level 2 and multiply that by the CA series forecast in level 2. I personally stop using series lower than level 9 as the higher level series to distribute from because at that point there's not that much aggregation, which kind of defeats the purpose of going top down. And also, as you can see, there's a lot more series in 10 and 11 as compared to level 9 and above, which is going to make my code execute pretty slowly for these levels. To get things started, we can create a column called last 28 mean and use this to store the mean value of sales for the last 28 days for all the level 12 series. And then there's this big chunk of ugly code. Basically, what I'm doing here is that for each higher level we want to distribute from, looping through 1 to 9, first make forecasts for all series in this level. Then for each series in this level, we want to find all the level 12 series that make up this series. 
And in order to do that, I have this condition variable that basically finds all the columns within this level that is significant for grouping, or in other words, as long as it doesn't contain the all value, which is why I have this if statement here. As for the level one series, all of these columns have all values. So we do something slightly different for it, where we don't need the condition for the group splitting and go directly to finding the mean for this higher level series. For both cases, find the right proportions and distribute our sales forecast. We'll write that forecast into DF, which is the data frame that stores all level 12 series, and use the level number in the forecast column name, F underscore level number underscore forecast day. Once we've done all of this for one level, we'll move on to the next level and so on. When the loop finishes, this means we have used all the levels from one to nine as the higher level series to distribute forecast from. And at this stage, DF will contain forecasts distributed from all of those different levels. Now we want to re-aggregate to get the forecast for all the higher level series. Because for each level as the distribution source, we only made forecasts for that level and none of the other higher levels. For example, if we use level 2 as the distribution source, we don't have forecasts for level 1 and levels 3 to 11. So we'll just copy and paste the same code we used to make our aggregate data frame, call it new AGGDF. And this time we do want all the forecast columns. This might take a bit. Now reassign AGGDF to the same object as new AGGDF. And we can move on to evaluating WRMSC for using each of these levels as the source of distribution. I'll use the same code as before. Set the range for each of these loops to go from 1 to 9. And here are the results. We can see that using level 1 as the source of forecast distribution works the best, and the error seems to increase bit by bit as the source level gets lower. And if you remember, forecasting directly from level 12 gave us a score of around 0.85 on this local validation set. To make a submission file using the top-down method, we first need to adjust the values in last 28 mean to take the average from days 1886 to 1913. And since using level 1 as source performed the best, we'll calculate the average sales between this range for the level 1 series, store that in a variable called level 1 mean, and the proportion will simply be the value in column last 28 mean divided by level 1 mean, because everything belonged to the same group in level 1. Since we make forecasts using just the same values as the previous 28 days, the forecast for each level 12 series from days 1914 to 1941 is the sales number of the level 1 series from respective days in 1986 to 1913 times the proportion. And we will again make the same forecast for every row with ID appended by underscore evaluation, then store this data frame in submission.csv. To submit, follow the same steps as last time, commit, open version, go to output, and submit. And this is the score I'm getting. I'm quite happy that this score, although just slightly, was better than making individual forecasts for level 12s and going bottom up. It shows some promises in training a model to forecast for higher level series and redistributing the forecast. I like this because transforming all the level 12 series to a time series format to prepare it for a machine learning model really takes up a lot of RAM. And because I'm using the free 16 gigs of RAM Kaggle provides, I've been having a lot of trouble with building almost any model around such a huge data frame. So I'm really hoping that I could train on smaller data frames and redistribute. For example, using Siri from one of the higher levels. Because as you can see, there's a lot less series going up the levels. I'll do more experiment on that and keep you guys updated if there's any progress. Until then, please stay safe and happy. See you next time.